Hello, today I have more power banks. Two big requests, really. One from Ugreen that is really going to be in a tough spot to see if it can keep up with its claims because it is going up against the big anchor 250 watt mega ultra power bank. It's probably just nonsense because you know what we do here. We'll be testing it to find out if these power banks can sustain their power levels, what modes of operation they have, how much energy do they have, and a whole lot more in this video. The Ugring claims 145 watts of power capability, so it's no slouch either. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and is compared to near competitors. In this video, two power banks will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities and help you make an informed buying decision. As I slowly build up the list of power banks tested, hopefully we will find some better ones. So that is why this video is here, to find out if one of these is the better power bank. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon, the super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. First up is the Ugreen 145 watt 25,000 milliamp hour power bank with model 90597A. This has been requested for quite a long time and is finally making it onto the channel. The power bank is a little more advanced in that it has both power delivery and quick charge capabilities on three total ports. It can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts on the USB-C and 5, 9, and 12 volts on the USB-A port, as well as charge from those voltages on the USB-C. This distinctly lacks any PPS modes I could see, so this will only slow charge phones that require PPS mode. The device has a specific port that can deliver 100 watts of output power and is labeled as such, which is a good idea. The other port can do up to 45 watts, the other USB-C port that is. These two ports together will get you 145 watts total. We will have to check later for how long it can do this 145 watts for. The charging is a little slower, topping out at 60 watts for this power bank. This is surprising considering how much power out it has. The user manual is nice because it includes the infographic that shows what ports do what and how much power they can deliver with various devices plugged in. I like this method of showing the capabilities. There could certainly be more in here like the actual usable capacity, but nope. Not that anyone else does that either. No specific safety listing, which is fairly common for power banks. Let's change things up and look at claim charge rates. I made a chart of devices. These are from the previous reviews and I just kept the data and changed it around a bit to the number of times the power bank can do each of these things with those devices. It looks like the energy in this device can pretty much charge anything. It might not be the fastest, but at least it can do it. The power bank can do the 145 watts of power output, but don't expect it to do it for very long. It only discharged to 70% of the rated capacity before turning off. Interestingly, only the 100 watt port shut down and the 45 watt port kept on operating. This makes me think the electronics are overheating and not the battery. We will check the thermals later on, but this was a problem I ran into with this power bank. It won't deliver 100 watts just like the Bassius ones I looked at for a whole discharge cycle. It always stops before depleting the battery. The best I was able to get out of this power bank continuously was 50 watts. This really can't keep up in the long run with the wattage claims on the package and it looks like the electronics are the blame here. If you wanna try to go 115 watts on one port, it will shut down safely though. So with that, the power bank can't easily empty the tank at 100 watts, which is a bit of a down point for this power bank already. This should be a 50 watt power bank in reality since that's what it can do full time and then it needs a little break since it overheats before depleting the battery to 0%. The power bank used a reasonable amount of energy during the charging cycle and charged moderately quickly. At one hour and 42 minutes to a full charge, it isn't bad. It doesn't take most of the advantage of a 100 watt power adapter, but it still gets there in a reasonable time. The one issue I have with this adapter is the inaccuracy of the display. It says 100% at one hour and 13 minutes, yet it keeps on charging for an additional 30 minutes. I'm not a fan of the power meter displaying inaccurate information. Even if it showed 99% while it wasn't fully done and then it tripped over to 100% when it was actually done, that would be nice. This power bank also loses some efficiency points. At 21% power loss at 50 watts out, this delivers an average amount from the wall to the output. That is okay. It's just in the middle. It isn't great, it isn't bad. And this is really recent because the newer power banks have gotten a lot more efficient. The Anchor A1340 Prime Power Bank 27,650 milliamp hour portable charger with 250 watt output. Again, we have the Anchor retail package, shelf ready. It can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and EPR 28 volts on the USB-C and 5, 9, and 12 volts on the USB-A port, as well as charge from those voltages on the USB-C port. That first USB-C port is compatible with 140 watt mode only. 
This also has a PPS or programmable power supply mode of 21 volts and this can do 5 amps too, so support for Samsung 45 watt super fast charging is on the menu. It only does it on the faster port though. The other port has no PPS. The user manual for this is not bad. It gives you some very simplified specifications. Easy to know how to use and what to expect. They do mention the double push to enable the low power mode, but I still can't get it to turn off. Here is a chart of devices with numbers and times it can charge each. It looks like with the energy in this device it can pretty much do anything, and it should be able to charge all of these devices at maximum speed. The power bank can charge very quickly with its USB-C port. The device will full charge at 140 watts for nearly its entire charge. So at 140 watts it only takes 1 hour. At 100 watts it takes 1 hour and 24 minutes. Not bad and faster than most other power banks. In 140 watt mode it tapers for about 20 minutes but this one also has the issue where the display shows 100% long before charging is done. The screen percent charge on this device is extremely inaccurate and I also saw this on the 200 watt anchor power bank. It's like from the 737 to this device, they forgot how batteries work. This does have Bluetooth in it and app support. I'm just mentioning it, but based on Anchor's history with user data and apps, I'm not going to install it. I know everyone is just as bad, but I'm not going to test it. The Anchor does have the multi-pin magnetic connector on the bottom for charging with the base. I kind of wonder if anyone will buy into the system besides me and other reviewers. Let me know. The power bank was great in terms of efficiency. It matches the ZMI and overall efficiency and it does a surprisingly good job at supplying power to the output. The power bank only loses 19% of the power from the wall to provide you portable power. This is very good. Moving on to checking if this power bank can deliver 250 watts and I only got it to 235 watts continuous because the low power mode stays on for hours and you just have to wait for it to time out. But either way, it doesn't do it continuously, it shuts off. I got through a decent amount of the battery though, down to about 35% or so before it shut down. It didn't have a persistent overheat warning either, it just shut down and reset. Okay, time to weigh some power banks. Overall, the power banks are heavier, maybe a bit heavier than they should be. The Ugreen is 506 grams, which isn't awful, and the Anchor is 663 grams, which seems like a lot, but it is a larger battery. We'll check the density later on. I checked the packaging on these, and the Anchor was 249 grams of waste to have a fancy box, and it's just not worth anything. These both did come with USB-C cables. The Anchor has the 140 watt labeled, but it's really a 240 watt cable, and the Ugreen came with a 100 watt cable, each around 20 grams. These power banks have very different dimensions again. The Anchor I would describe as a burrito power bank and the Ugreen is a more typical long flat pack. The Anchor is bigger and heavier, but it is also a larger battery. In comparison with the other power banks in this range, this one is nearly the same size as the 737, so they did make some optimization of space for this one. The voltages all stayed within the tolerances of the USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. These power banks all had general compatibility with any chargers I use them with. Another advantage is they both will charge very slowly, but still charge even with an old 5 watt USB-A brick. So this is great to see. Next, I checked the UPS capability of these power banks, that is, uninterruptible power supply. As it turns out, the Ugreen was able to keep the USB-C port operating during multiple functions on the other USB port. So this can keep going even when the power goes out on that other port. The issue here is that the power bank can deplete itself still since it will allow more power to flow out than in. It only charged at 30 watts, so it isn't really a UPS and it isn't supposed to be, but if you want to keep the power going for a project, this will probably work. Anchor claims to not have this feature and does not. It turns off right away. Both of these power banks have a low power mode. With a double click, they turn on the USB-A port for several hours to charge low power devices. I'm still having trouble to get it to turn off on the Anchor. These power banks are within the 100 watt hour requirement for extra non-permitted air travel of power banks. They're a little heavy, but can still be carry on power banks. The Anchor is about as close as you can get to the limit at 99.54 watt hours. And remember, watt hours determine if it can fly, not watts. These power banks can discharge fast. That is the big difference between these and cheaper power banks. The power output is high if you need it, but it won't stay on for a long period of time. I got about 10 minutes of runtime on the anchor at 235 watts before it shut down. Granted that basically depleted the battery. The Ugreen, however, is much worse. Its 145 watt claim is not great. It can only do that for a few minutes before it shuts down, but still worse, it couldn't even sustain 100 watts without shutting down. I don't like the claim being so much larger than the reality. 
The thermals on these power banks were reasonable. They got warm for sure. They had a few hot spots, especially around the USB port end where the electronics are. The anchor basically didn't get much warmer than ambient, so this might be a better option power bank for warmer climates. The charging and discharging showed low and stable temperatures during all tests, even the full power test, it didn't get hot. The Ugreen was fine on charging, which is limited to 60 watts, but when you flip over to discharging, it does develop some hot spots and it will overheat at anything over 50 continuous watts. It still didn't get overly hot on the outside of the case, so it safely shut down, which is good, but it's supposed to be 145 watts. In terms of value, these end up on the lower end of the scale, but did show improvement on the previous Anchor power banks. These are expensive power banks. The bigger Anchor one is really expensive. I'm surprised I bought this actually. They have big claims for performance and they charge a premium for those extra features. The thing I don't like is those extra features are basically temporary or really just marketing tricks in some cases. Just like the others, it's a theme. These don't charge at the full rated speed. They don't discharge at the full rated speed. They do technically meet the claims, but charging for features that aren't full-time features is not so great. One advantage with both of these power banks is the non-renegotiation of the outputs with the USB-C ports. So these will both stay on as long as you use the power. Onto the density chart. Another way to look at the data is the power density. And this is where, even if it's just a marketing number, these look great. Although the older 737 still wins one of these, I am looking at the energy and power densities of these power banks. The energy density is shown two ways, with both the weight and the physical size in liters. The higher the energy density, the better. The power density tells you just how fast you can access that energy. These more expensive power banks stand out. You can charge them fast and you can discharge them fast and apparently that costs money. Just a side note, these higher power density power banks also tend to be a lot more efficient than the slower charging ones. Anchor improved over predecessors in energy density but still is behind the competition. But again, that speed comes at a price of limited time offer. Although the new Anchor does better here in that it can charge and discharge at 140 watts without requiring rest periods. Overall, these power banks are different yet somehow have the same flaws. The Anchor has a ton of power capability on paper, but it's a short-term delivery. It can do 140 watts much better than the 737 though, so they have shown some measured improvement. The Ugreen reminds me of the overheating Shargeek, it just doesn't have the screen to tell me about it. I don't like that. It's expensive too. The charge meters on these power banks are both basically token gestures. They don't display the real battery percentage during the charging cycle. Without a separate power meter, you have no idea when charging is actually complete. 20 to 45 minutes after the device is 100% is not acceptable. It isn't like they taper at that 100% mark either. They continue at the full charge level for a while. Okay, so on the positive then. Well, one of these, the Anger, is really efficient. If you want to waste the least amount of energy and really need portable power, the Anchor has the most power, the most modes of operation, and the maximum travel safe energy out of anything I have tested. So the price is somewhat justified for being the best performer. Both of these are plain safe. You're basically doubling the biggest laptop battery. The Ugreen wasn't necessarily bad. I've just looked at some really high-end power banks and it's close, but it doesn't win any category compared to them. Between the Ugreen and the ZMI, the ZMI is coming with me first. Actually, the ZMI will probably go over the Anchor too. Well, it already has. So which power bank do you want? The Anchor is expensive, very expensive. It can charge and discharge faster than the others though. Full charge in one hour and discharge faster. The Ugreen is a more friendly form factor, I think, but it struggles to deliver the power. It is average efficiency wise though, and it does pack a good amount of energy storage. Both had good watt hour battery figures. Both have the low power mode. The Ugreen has UPS functionality. The negotiation is more independent on these devices, so plugs and unplugs don't cause other devices to reset. The Ugreen does more of that than the Anchor, so overall, they're both competent power banks. Okay, these are tested and not yet on any database. I'm still trying to dream it into reality and it keeps not working. At least I remember to put stickers on them this time. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to do more power adapters. I think I'm gonna do some lower wattage ones I picked up from a trip to Europe. Never heard of the brands, so it should be fun to check them out. I also have lots more adapters and power banks. I also have a very long list, so keep the suggestions coming. I write them all down. So check the All Things website linked in the description for upcoming videos, and as always, I will see you in the comments section. Thanks again, and goodbye.